Lord be with you. Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. If you have already eaten breakfast, I will not be offended if you fall asleep during the church. So I hope you stay awake, but me too as well, since I ate also. So let's begin with the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 912. Please note we will rise from the singing of the last stanza. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a colonnade servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, and the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. <coughs> Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the, from the, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help 
Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from Isaiah chapter 43. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me at the jackals and the ostriches. For I will give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle from Philippians chapter 3. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead." Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, the choir will sing.
Will you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? I'm sorry. Let's sing our Alleluia and verse first. Return to the Lord your God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. <laughs> Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants, and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants, so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, this one also they wounded and cast out. When the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir, let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them, that they feared people, the, they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children forward for the children's message. Come right on up. Have a seat there in the front pew. All right. Great to see everybody. Give everybody just a few seconds here. All right, very good. Come right on down. Well, it is great to see everybody here this morning for our children's message. Now, I brought along a few things. As a matter of fact, I brought along some fun things. I mean, have you ever built anything with blocks? Do you? All right. Well, I brought along some blocks here this morning. As a matter of fact, this block, if you look at it, it kind of like has church windows on it. You can actually... It does it? Well, ours doesn't. This is just this. So it kind of makes a castle, actually, probably more than a church. But anyway, if you, if you take all these things and you start building them, and your bottom part of the castle or your church isn't very strong, what happens? It falls down, right? That's right. It breaks. It falls down. So you've got to find some really good pieces in here. Matter of fact, here we go. It's got some flat pieces. We can put those down, and we could build on top of that, and we'd have a pretty good base because everything is going to stay pretty good on there. Well, if you listen real closely to our gospel lesson that I just read, you heard that Jesus called himself a cornerstone. Now, what is a cornerstone? Well, that's the part of the building, and I'm not an architect nor a builder, okay? So don't think Pastor knows everything about it, because I don't. But anyway, the point is, is that we have to have a good foundation, a good place to start, okay? And that's what the cornerstone does. It makes it, everything straight from that point on. And that's why I brought along this, because what is this? It is a Bible. You are right. It's not a block or anything like that. It's not concrete. It's not wood. It's the Bible because the Bible is what the church... Very good. All right. The Bible is what we build our church upon. Everything that we preach and teach is from... At home? Yeah. 
Well, this one came from church. I just grabbed this one out of the back room this morning, right? Because this is what our church teaches. You heard me just read three lessons from Isaiah, and then our epistle lesson, and then our gospel lesson, and I'm going to be preaching from the gospel lesson, and we sang hymns that come from the Bible passages that we were reading today. Everything is about the Bible, because the Bible is about somebody very special. Do you know who that person is? How about Jesus? The Bible is all about Jesus, the cornerstone which we build everything else on, and he makes us the, what we are today. We are strong in him because he is the one that is the cornerstone of the church. All right? So I want you to listen real carefully today when you hear the sermon, which is just going to be a little bit, about the cornerstone, Jesus. All right, well, thank you very much for coming down. You guys can head back to moms and dads. And we join together in the continuing the singing of the hymn of the day, which is hymn number 430.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our Gospel lesson. Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard that let it, and let it out to the tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, this one also they wounded and cast out. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. This parable, of course, we've heard it many times. It is a hard lesson, though, to hear. Especially to the people who are standing there that day. They heard Jesus. And of course, being good Jews, they also knew that Jesus was telling a parable that they had heard before. Now, I don't mean literally at that time, but by the prophet Isaiah. This is from Isaiah chapter 5, beginning of verse 1. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a vine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, and it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, and why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down the wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make a waste. It sh I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hold, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they, that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. See, again, a good Jew knew his Old Testament. He knew his history. He knew that God had spoken against Israel time after time after time with the prophets, which, of course, are the servants who go into the vineyard in our gospel lesson. It is hard to hear that retelling of unrepentant sin. At least, it should be hard to hear because it is going to be convicting, or I, again, I should say, should be convicting to not just Israel, but to all people. For we know, of course, that it is because of our sin that Jesus had to go to the cross in the first place. That He sent His apostles, His prophets. And yet, even today, people do not listen to them. When the Word of God is spoken, some, of course, stop up their ears and desire not to hear anything. That is, that refusal to listen to the Lord. That all the prophets that were sent by God were for one purpose, and one purpose only. And that was for the good of Israel, for their own good. Which is why, even now, as we hear the Word of God today, we know that it is for our own good that God has given to us His Word. So that the very Word of all those people, the prophets, the apostles, may cut us to the quick. That they would drive us to the very cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we may hear these words that our Lord speaks in Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 11. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, as a child of God, there is no guarantee that there is not going to be suffering. There is not going to be hardship. 
there is, as a matter of fact, Scripture tells us, going to be just that, suffering and hardship, and yet joy. Because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the peace that God has given to us as He has transformed us from who we were to who we are now as His people. As our story continues on then, we've got the servants who have been cast out, beaten, mistreated. The father, the master, is at his wit's end, so to speak. The text goes on and says, Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him, so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, surely not. I mean, humanly speaking, when we read this parable, we have to sit there and go in our, in our minds, or at least I know I do, how on earth would a master, a father, after he'd seen what has taken place, say, hey, good idea, let's send my son, my beloved son. Now, Again, humanly speaking, no one would truly be and do something that foolish. But thanks be to God, He is not everyone else. Over and over and over again, He sent the prophets to Israel. Still, hope. Hope was still there because now the promise was going to be fulfilled. The Savior was going to come into the world. Not just for Israel, but for all people. Jesus came for us all. Even though the world still hates Him. So what about this expectation of, well, maybe even delusion of the inhabitants there, the tenants, that they're going to receive the inheritance. Well, they continue to think in their own way and do things in their own way. It's a travesty, of course. But yet, it still took place. Even to the point where they cry out, surely not! Like they deserved the inheritance? No, they did not deserve it. But that does not mean that God was not going to still give it. See, we know that we were God's enemies. We hated God. We were sinners. Still are, of course. But born into sin and hated God. Enemies of His. But He still sent His Son. Who lived and died so that we don't have to be separated from God for what we deserve. Surely not. The cry of the people. And yet, the Lord looks at them and says, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them. In other words, they got it, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. See, the end result of those who the stone falls on and those who fall on it are the exact same thing. The stone that is rejected, of course, is Christ. has to be because, sadly, even after His birth, there in the temple when His parents were doing that which God had called them and commanded them to do in the law, we read this. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. 
right from the beginning, Jesus, he knew it. He had already proclaimed it, that the people were not going to listen, that they would rather do things their own way, that they themselves would rather be crushed or bruised, broken, but not redeemed. But see, again, that's the result of the cross. Listen to 1 Corinthians, beginning in chapter 1, verse 23. Paul writes, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and folly to Gentiles. The only way the cross of Jesus Christ is understood is by faith. Faith that God has given to us through the waters of holy baptism. It is unavoidable. People are going to be separated from God on the last day because of unbelief. It is tragic, but it is going to happen. That is why we are here today. To hear the Word. To take the Word from these walls out into our daily lives. And to allow others to know our Savior. That our Savior Jesus Christ has given to us life. Because unfortunately today we know our parable is a good example of how not to take care of problems. Matter of fact, the Jews think, well, yes, let's, let's just get rid of Jesus. That makes sense. Hand him over to the governor. We'll pass on the buck. They really didn't get the message. Oh, they understood it, but they didn't get it. That's how we know, because Jesus had to die. Thanks be to God, Jesus did go to the cross. Nothing was going to stop him from doing that. But it is the cross that shines that glaring light into our own lives. It is the cross that shows us that the law is good. For the law shows us our sin, and yet the cross shows us our Savior. See, they just wanted to make Jesus someone else's problem. Whereas we want to make others alive in Him. He is our cornerstone, which again, as I said to the children, this is why we read Old Testament epistle, gospel lessons. This is why we preach from the Word that God has given to us. It's vital. It's life. It is that which God has given to us to save us from ourselves and to remind us that we are built on the solid foundation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. Amen. Will you please rise as we join together this morning in the confession of our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for deliverance from pride and self-justification, that God would rescue us from the folly of believing we are righteous because of our worthiness, and that He would strengthen our faith in the surpassing worth of Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for pastors, that they would be faithful in preaching of the word and the administration of the sacraments, and for the congregations, that they would receive these gifts in thankfulness, that Christ was rejected by sinners, so that we may be welcomed into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents, that God would bless them with every good gift to teach their children that salvation and life is theirs in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For civil authorities, that God would strengthen them to discourage evil and encourage good, and that he would keep us ever mindful that it is he who shields us and lifts our heads. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the anxious and fearful, that God who grants sleep and awakens again would console them with his mercy and deliverance in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in any need, especially this morning we remember Jackie and Melba, Ken, Mary, Wayne, Francis, Diane, Anna, Nick, Carolyn, and Norma. Gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for these, your servants. We thank you that you are continuing to be a blessing to them, watching over them and keeping them in your care. Father, we continue also to lift up the Ukraine before you and ask that you will allow Russia to return home, that they will turn from their evil and also join in repentance of their sin, and that there may be peace once again in, on the earth. Father, we pray for all that you will be a blessing to them who do not know you, that someone may proclaim the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, into their hearts and minds. Father, we lift these our prayers before you, knowing that you hear and that you answer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for all good works that God who does not extinguish us like a wick would enlighten us in Christ and cause our light to shine before others to the glory of his name. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have for repentant hearts that we may abandon all confidence in our flesh, counting all other gains as loss and so receive Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, in baptism you have shared Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection with us, that we might be raised from the dead. Preserve us from taking his sacrifice for granted. Encourage us to forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead until we attain the resurrection from the dead. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together now in the singing of the offertory. trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we have, we have again worshipped in your presence, and received both forgiveness for our many sins, and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive now the blessings of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. 
Just a reminder, you probably saw it as you came in, but where the, the uh, mites are be taken, are collecting, be, hang on a second, mites are being collected today in the big mite box in the back. And also, as I mentioned earlier, if you haven't, please make sure to avail yourself of the pancake breakfast this morning put on by the youth of our congregations, Grace, Trinity, and St. Paul. It is really good. So, let's join together now in the singing of our closing hymn, hymn number 433.